ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಚಾಮರಾಜ ಎನ್ಎ ಅಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಯು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಅಟ್ ದ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಐ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವರಾತ್ರಿ ರಾಜೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಂಟಿಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಓಲಿನೆಸ್ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವರಾತ್ರಿ ದೇಸಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಟು ದ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ ಸುತ್ತೂರ್ ಮಠ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪಿಲಿಗ್ರಿಮ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಹಟ್ ಸುತ್ತೂರು ಇನ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎ ಹಿಸ್ಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಎ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಪಾಂಟಿಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿವೋಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನಲ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೈತ್ ದ ಮಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎ ಸೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಡ್ ಸೀಸ್ಲೆಸ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವರಾತ್ರೀಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾವಿದ್ಯಾಪೀಠ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಮಹಾವಿದ್ಯಾಪೀಠ ವಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಬೈ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಮಹಾವಿದ್ಯಾಪೀಠ ಇಸ್ ಹೋಲಿನೆಸ್ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವರಾತ್ರಿ ರಾಜೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ದ ವಿಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೋಲಿನೆಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟ್ರಿಗರ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ರೆವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ವರ್ಡ್ ರೂರಲ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ his vision was responsible for bringing about an excellent blend of traditional culture with modern science leading to the total personality development of individuals through a network of over 325 educational institutions propagating both cultural education and modern multidisciplinary professional education the present pontiff is holiness Jagadguru Sri Shivaratri Desi Kendra Mahaswamiji he is heading the JSS Mahavidya Pita it as its president in commemoration of 106th Jayanti celebration of Sri Man Maharaja Rajaguru Tilaka his holiness Jagadguru Dr Sri Shivaratri Rajendra Mahaswamiji the department of chemistry JSS CTE Bangalore organizing a one day a webinar a international webinar on the need to move towards inter and transdisciplinarity research for innovative innovations at this now i request dr v mahesh associate professor department of chemistry jsct bengaluru to welcoming the welcoming all the dignitaries to the webinar thank you thank you sir <coughs> seeking the blessings of his holiness shri shri shivaratri rajendra mahaswami ji and his holiness jagadguru shri shivaratri deshikendra mahaswami ji good morning joint director technical education jss mahavidya pita principal jss at bangalore deans of jss at bangalore hods and my dear colleagues eminent scholars honored guests and ladies and gentlemen it is great pleasure indeed for me to welcome you to the international webinar on the need to move towards inter and trans disciplinarity research for impactful innovations organized by department of chemistry jssat bangalore in view of 106th jayanti celebration of our swami ji is holiness jagadguru shri shri uh, uh, shivaratri rajendra mahaswami ji i am very happy and grateful that more than 400 distinguished professors and research students have registered from both home and abroad to listen and instill their knowledge to determine better ways of exploring the research in their respective disciplines and trans disciplines in this regard i would like to take this opportunity to welcome and express my deep appreciation to our joint director Tech, uh, technical education division jss mahavidya pita professor hr mahadev swami for taking part in this symposium i thank him for his invaluable help and advice to plan the program i welcome you sir thank you sir i welcome today's speaker professor c ram ramakrishna who graciously accepted my invitation to address the professors and researchers welcome 
uh, to you, Professor. The driving force of all activities in the JSSAT campus is our beloved principal, Dr. Mrutunjaya Vittala Latte. I welcome you for this occasion, sir. I welcome Dr. D.V. Ashoka, Dean R&D, who is the catalyst behind this program. I welcome uh, Professor Bhimsen uh, uh, Sorgam, Dean Academics, and I welcome uh, Professor uh, B.P. Shokumar, Dean Students Welfare, JSSAT Bangalore to this program. I welcome all the HODs, Section Heads, Teaching Fraternity, Administrative and Accounts, as well as non-teaching staff and my dear students, uh, to the program. I welcome all the delegates across the globe as well as the state. Many international conferences or webinars have been held several times on, the camp on this campus, but this is the first webinar specially devoted to inter and transdisciplinary research for impactful innovations. I would like to thank the officials of JSS Mahavidya Pita and the Dean R&D as well as the faculty and staff members of uh, JSS ATEB and Department of Chemistry who generously given help during arranging this program. I hope you will have a most productive, uh, interesting and stimulating webinar uh, and a discussion. <coughs> and uh, I, I hope you will participate actively. Let me introduce the today's uh, speaker. It is my pleasure to introduce the today's speaker, Professor P. E. C. Ram Ramakrishna. Everest Chair is among the top three researchers at the National University of Singapore and among the top five researchers of Singapore. National University of Singapore ranked among the top 10 best global universities for engineering in the world. He is among the top 500 highly cited researchers in the world. Highest professional distinctions include an elected fellow of UK Royal Academy of Engineering, Singapore Academy of Engineering, Indian National Academy of Engineering, and Asian Academy of Engineering and Technology. He is also an elected fellow of American Association of Advancement of Science, ASM International, American Society for Mechanical Engineers, American Institute for Medical and Biomedical Engineering, Institution of Mechanical Engineers, and institution of materials, minerals, and mining. <clears throat> he is a senior member of IEEE. He received PhD from University of Cambridge, UK, and the GMP training from Harvard University, USA. Among numerous recognitions he received are IIT Madras Distinguished Alumni Award, Singapore Lee Kong Eve Fellowship, UK Cambridge Nehru Fellowship, Springer Nature China New Development Award, Honorary Everest Chair of Nepal, CUT Honorary Engineering Doctorate South Africa, APA Distinguished Research Award, International Federation of Engineering Education Societies President Award, Global Visionary, Global Engineering Dean's Council Ambassador, Asian Outstanding Engineering Award, Institute of Engineers, IES, prestigious Engineering Achievement Award. Thomas Reuters identified him as the world's most influential scientific minds. His Google Scholar citations are 1,28,600, H index 164, I10 index 1082. Clarivate Analytics recognized him among the top 1% highly cited researchers in the world in material science and cross-field categories. Microsoft Academic ranked him among the top 500 authors out of the 3 million material researchers worldwide based on uh, saliency, publications, citations, and H-index. He is regarded as the guru of electrospinning and nanofibers. His academic leadership includes National University's Vice President, Research Strategy. Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Director of NUS Enterprise, Director of NUS Industrial Liaison Officer, <coughs> etc. As a founding chairman, he, cham he championed the establishment of $100 million 
Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore series. He served as a board member of several national organizations, policy institutes, and tertiary education institutes. He received long service medal, Pingat Bhakti Setia, during Singapore National Awards 2021. He founded the Global Engineers Engineering Dean's Council while serving as the Vice President of International Federation of Engineering Educator Societies. He authored the book, The Changing Face of Innovation. He is a founding member of Plastics Recycling Association of Singapore, PRAS, and chairman of Plastic Recycling Center of Excellence. He is the Circular Economy Task Force Chair at NUS. He is a member of Extended Producer Responsibility Advisory Committee of the Ministry of Sustainability and Environment, Environment and the National Environment Agency, Singapore. He is a member of Environmental, Social and Governance Committees of Singapore Institute of Directors. He is a member of Enterprise Singapore's ISO's committees on ISO slash TC323 Circular Economy and WG3 on Circulatory. Circularity, sorry. He is also chair the Sustainable Manufacturing TC at the in Institution of Engineers Singapore and a member of Standard Committee of Singapore Manufacturing Federation. He is a member of Technical Committee for Circular Materials, Environment and Resource Materials Committee. So he is a member of IIT Madras. Through Leaders Council, he co-authored a book, Sustainability for Beginners. He is a member of World Bank Advisory Group for the India Tertiary Education National Education Policy Dialogue, Analytical and Advisory Work, ASA. He is a member of UNESCO's Global Independent Expert Group on Universities and the 2030 Agenda. His book on circular economy received 2021 Springer Nature China New Development Award. European Commission Director General for Environment Excellency Daniel Koleja Crespo said, Professor C. Ram Ramakrishna should be praised for his personal engagement leading the reflections on how to develop a more sustainable future for all. Sir, we, we welcome you to the program. I request you to present your talk. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mahesh, for your kind introduction. I like to congratulate JSS for celebrating 106th anniversary of Jagat Guru. I also place on record that efforts by JSS, ATE, in fostering advanced knowledge through webinars, conferences, to young generation of the Institute. And I also appreciate, also express my gratitude uh, for inviting me and asking me to deliver a lecture very close to my heart. Allow me to share my slides and then I begin my lecture. Sir, permitted, sir. You can share, sir. Yeah. So I hope you all can see my screen. So between uh, Mahesh Basraj and myself, yes, sir. we discussed uh, what could be a very interesting topic for the audience of today. So we felt a title that is the need to move towards inter and transdisciplinary research for impactful innovations would be very timely for the audience. As I was introduced by Mahesh, I advise the World Bank uh, in terms of India tertiary education. Hence, some of my presentation will make reference to the new 
national educational policy of India. First, I like to state my deep convictions. According to the statistics, last 12,000 years, growth of humanity on planet Earth, statistics suggest last 300 years, there is an exponential growth of human population on planet Earth. I believe this is a scholarly knowledge exponential dividend. Knowledge that is absorbed by education of human mind at various levels, encompassing human health and well-being. No doubt, the knowledge accumulation and dissemination has led to thriving of humanity on planet Earth. All civilizations, including Indian civilization, has a deep roots in intellectual scientific thinking spanning 10,000 years. When we talk about modern scientific publications, in this slide, it shows you a printed scientific publications of major well-known journals in the world. As you can see, nature and science are very popular with a very high impact factor. Nature Journal started in 1880. Similarly, Science Journal started in 1880. Nature Journal started publishing articles in 1869. So in other words, modern publication of scientific research is relatively new when we compare to the history of humanity. So last three to 400 years, there is a massive increase in uh, scientific publishing, accumulation of knowledge, and widespread sharing of knowledge among millions of scientists and engineers around the world. I also believe knowledge contributes to upliftment of human mind. I looked at all living beings on planet Earth and compare with the human beings on a several criteria. Uh, just to get everybody on the same thinking, there are about total 7.7 .7 billion people on planet Earth. But the number of living beings on planet Earth is actually much more than number of human beings on planet Earth. To illustrate this, if you go to a forest, stand on a soil, forest soil, you pick a handful of that soil, most likely that soil will have more number of living beings than the total number of living beings on planet Earth. So planet Earth is immensely rich with the diversity of living beings. Humans tend to be differentiating and that's why I put this table to compare as per my understanding. Humans create knowledge, they accumulate, they store them, they transmit, they update them, like seminars, webinars, like this. We are also very good in imaginary constructs in terms of purpose, values, fairness, respect, freedom, equality, equity, art, religion, spirituality, language, currency, commerce, finance, calendar, nation, 
politics, science, metrics, and medicine. So there are several. So others, we do have a commonality with other living beings. But in terms of knowledge, certainly uh, human beings uh, differentiate substantially from all other living beings known on planet Earth. And we can learn a lot from other human books. As you travel across India, our mind opens up. If you start cro crossing India and travel overseas, immerse yourself with the different cultures, no doubt your mind will connect uh, different ideas out there and you will form your own creative your ideas and thoughts. In a way, I believe the software of human mind gets updated as we learn from others and experience throughout our lifespan, somewhere up to 100 years. Of course, for a very blessed individual like Sadhgurus, they are crossing hundreds of 100 years, but generally humans live anywhere between 100 to 125 years. What's also interesting is mind, not just the brain, the mind is very important. The way we interact, the way we go about knowledge. Uh, this is just a, an example of a French slack liner. He recently crossed the Rhine River in Paris on a tightrope. What's more interesting is I highlighted about this gentleman, Nathan Pauling. He actually had a fear of heights in childhood, but with practice and training, he's able to overcome his own fears. So the central message is, I'm very sure uh, it is a core message of spirituality. Uh, we can uplift our minds through practice, through exposure to better thinking and better way of approaching experiences we come across every day throughout our life. Now the outline is, I like to introduce our university where I'm working as a senior professor, because I know many of the JSS ATE students would like to know. Then I will touch upon uh, national educational policy 2020. The reason is that impacts all education institutions in India that includes JSS University or Academy. <clears throat> After that, I will also touch upon the need and importance of interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary research and what are the opportunities for everyone. So this is uh, an introductory slide about National University of Singapore in Singapore. We are ranked very highly worldwide among the top 10 subjects, among the top 10 in the world in 16 subjects architecture, built environment, chemical engineering, chemistry. I know Mahesh and all of you are from chemistry department. The NUS chemistry is ranked number seven in the world. To give you an idea, there are 20,000 universities in the world. And then computer science, civil engineering, geography, material science, mathematics, and sociology, and so on. In terms of uh, global ranking, as an institution, NUS ranks among the top 25 universities in the world. And here is the information over the last 10 years, how the ranking of the university improved substantially. I've highlighted these rankings depend on the perception of the employers about this university and graduates, teaching quality, more importantly, research impact. 
Uh, here is an, a numbers since the topic is related to research. Last uh, five years, National University of Singapore faculty members, which is about 2,500 people, published more than 45,000 papers. And they have more than 3,000 collaborations across 160 countries. Even more interesting is the number of highly cited researchers, which is one of the key metrics in many global rankings. So 30% of the Singapore's highly cited researchers are at the National University of Singapore. And many of them are international talent. Internationalization is not only in terms of research, it is also in terms of entrepreneurship. Uh, this is an activity I started at the National University of Singapore 20 years ago. It has now expanded to many regions of the world where our students are exposed to entrepreneurial ecosystems around the world, very successful program. Uh, similarly, if you look at the employability survey, uh, NUS stands at the ninth in the world. Uh, we are a very large university with the 30,000 undergraduate students, which is roughly 40% of the, all the students that go to the universities in Singapore. What is more interesting is more than 50%, nearly 60% of them go for international programs. So there is a very strong emphasis on international experience and cross-cultural learning. I'm sure JSS Academy uh, in the years to come, you would be doing something similar. And proof of the pudding is the taste. Uh, you could see former graduates, what they think about going global, thinking local, ensures good career opportunities. This is also another example of how this benefits uh, graduates and preparing them for the future ready. And this is another ranking which compares employability of graduates. NUS is ranked at 17. These are the Indian top institutions in the same survey in terms of employability, global employability survey. And in terms of innovation index, Singapore stands among the top 10 nations in the world. It's also one of the good destinations for international students like London, Australia, as well as USA and Canada. So now I move on to the second topic, India's National Educational Policy 2020. Uh, that was uh, chaired by Dr. Kasturi Rangan. And it's amazing that uh, India's higher education sector is massive. 1947, at the time of independence, India only had 20 universities and 496 colleges. Fast forward 75 years, India now has more than 1,000 universities and 52,000 colleges. India now has an enrollment ratio about 26%. According to the National Educational Policy 2020, by 2040, that is 20 years from now, the gross enrollment ratio to increase from the current 26% to 50%. So in other words, there is a massive expansion needed by institutions like JSS, ATE, JSS Academy. It also emphasizes digitalization and both industrial revolution technologies, internationalization, as well as more investments in scientific research in India. Uh, these are the, a very large report, close to 100 pages, and I just highlighted uh, topics related to today's uh, webinar. Uh, it encourages uh, mass growth in uh, enrollment, and it also expresses that India should have both 
research intense universities as well as every university doing some kind of research as India becomes more progressive in the next 20 years. In other words, even teaching institutions are encouraged to pursue research in their own programs. Hence, today's seminar is extremely relevant to all the faculty members of JSS Academy and ATE, as well as leaders, and also all the students. It also talks about uh, cross-cultural learning, more integrative approach involving sustainability, climate change, uh, waste management, biodiversity, and ethics and values. Also emphasizes a strong internationalization, and clearly that's why um, your organizer, Mahesh Basaraj invited me to share international perspective in this webinar. Also, it involves uh, many other aspects of human society progress built on the civilization started in Indus Valley. But I, my own belief, which is uh, said in the right, in the right below, in the red, red form. It's very hard to implement all the recommendations in a country like India with social, geographical, economic, political constraints that vary widely across the country. Nevertheless, uh, India had to progress and implement this national educational policy. Now I move to the inter- and transdisciplinary research. Why is this important? and how should we go about Again, I take another reference. Uh, if you notice, I'm not taking any references 10,000 years or 5,000 years or 2,000 years. Uh, that is too far in the history. Most of the students I mentor, they're in mil mil what we call them Z generation or millennials. They seem to be much more focused on what's happening today uh, the last 100 or 150 years. So I thought I will describe the concept through Galileo, who succeeded despite the difficult situation he had to face in 17th century. Uh, he's regarded as father of modern science, but he is a polymath, he's an individual whose knowledge spans a substantial number of subjects and known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. So fast forward last 300 years, there is a massification of research around the world that started in Europe, went on to USA, Japan, South Korea, more recently China, and now India, where millions of researchers are involved in conducting scientific research. To get an idea, the number of researchers per million population jumped from 1,000 in 2010 to 1,235 in 2018. If you look at number of uh, medical doctors per million population, actually scientific research community is uh, very large and comparable. So in other words, scientific research enterprise has grown very large in the last 50 years. Big data analytics, artificial intelligence, and other digital technologies are routinely used in analyzing massive volumes of bibliometrics. There are tens of millions of papers in the databases that analyze via Google Scholar, Web of Science, Scopus, Microsoft Academic, and our ratings and rankings. Some of the people in the audience who are teachers and professors, when they did their PhD, including myself, none of these bibliometrics existed, and we do not need to be concerned about them. 
But right now, 2021, these bibliometrics are widely accessed by millions of researchers worldwide. So it is a, a paradigm shift uh, that's happening. Similarly, because of the massive increase in the knowledge, uh, monodisciplinary silos of research has taken the root. In fact, most academic departments in the universities are structured based on the monodisciplines. And they have uh, reasons for their existence, but also causes the rigid boundaries between different disciplines, which makes polymaths kind of researchers a challenge to survive and thrive. Of course, on the right side is the cartoon. Uh, if you're uh, publishing papers in scientific research, uh, what happens? That's uh, meant as a light comment. It's a busy slide. I will share a copy of my slides uh, via uh, Dr. Maesh. But if you like, you can send me an email. I will be happy to share a copy of my slides with you. So according to several international studies, there is need for us to move from strong emphasis on monodiscipline to cross-disciplinary or what we call interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary to address scientific challenges faced by the humanity. Also to undertake a more holistic approach in solutioning innovations. For example, India, as well as all the countries around the world, ratified 17 sustainable development goals of United Nations that involves solving the poverty issues, hunger issues, good health and well being, clean water, sanitation, um, good food, nutrition, economic growth, sustainable community cities, climate action. In essence, all these uh, 17 sustainable development goals encompass every human activities of 7.7 .7 billion people. Of course, some have been identified, identified as there's a need for a climate change action. There's also mental health issues is becoming one of the important uh, epidemic around the world. So it is not very well addressed in all the countries. So mental health is extremely important. If you refer to the beginning of my lecture, I was emphasizing about the mind. The mind is extremely important. And we have to understand our mind very deeply and differently. And of course, uh, digital technologies, still there's a massive need for innovation so that all human beings have access to digital technologies. I emphasize this because I'm part of the UNESCO expert group. It's a list of uh, eminent people from around the world. We looked at how do we encourage United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the universities to implement them. So we strongly believe we need to encourage the universities around the world, which is about 20,000 universities, to embrace interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity approaches to advance sustainable development goals within the university, as well as universities' role towards the society. In other words, you are training the human minds, future generations, future ready graduates, to understand sustainable development goals, which encompass every aspect of human life in their own uh, studies and research. It's a busy slide. It's actually meant to define what is interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, and multidisciplinarity. Well, to emphasize, in fact, uh, there are lots of new jobs are coming up in uh, sustainability domain, as well as uh, digital technology and healthcare. And very interesting today, Prime Minister of UK, Boris Johnson, said in his speech to the United Nations, 
we must show that we are capable of learning and maturing and finally taking responsibility for the destructive destruction we are inflicting, not just on our planet, but upon ourselves. Why I refer to UK is because we all know that uh, modern industrialization started from United Kingdom and India has a strong relations with UK. So the beginning, beginners of industrial revolution itself think that we ought to pay attention about the destructive role of current way of economic growth and importance of embracing sustainable approach in our learning, teaching, and research. Of course, we embrace that very strongly at the National University of Singapore. We have clusters which promote interdisciplinary and sustainability research. You, each institution can organize uh, their own cross-disciplinary clusters depending on their interests and also the critical mass they have. An example, for example, uh, we all know uh, young people as well as uh, seniors like to wear jeans. Uh, jeans consume a lot of resources. Uh, a company called Uniqlo is a Japanese brand. They came up with a, a cross-disciplinary way of dealing with how to wash the jeans with less amount of water. When you are actually making jeans, how to provide the texture and the design exactly people want, but without actually drawing upon natural resources too much. So they use most modern tools that involves understanding of physics, chemistry, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, as well as uh, ecosystems and sustainability. So just one example, it's a global brand and which sells products everywhere, including India. So this is just uh, emphasize that at the University of Singapore, uh, we take a holistic approach and we are transitioning towards interdisciplinary education across the university. There's one more aspect I like to emphasize. Uh, using bibliometrics, every year, a global company, Clarivate Analytics, analyzes millions of researchers and they identify highly cited researchers. It's about 6,000 of them. That includes several Nobel laureates. So if you look at uh, which countries have the most number of highly cited researchers, USA. So that's reason you find many young minds, they like to have an experience in the US. Of course, they go for many other reasons. But you look at a university like Harvard University, which is home to 188 highly cited researchers. That's the reason why Harvard is Harvard. Most important <clears throat> aspect, which I note is out of 6,000 <clears throat> highly cited <clears throat> researchers, 40% of them are now classified as cross-field researchers. That means almost one in two highly cited researchers are actually working in more than one discipline or at the intersection of the disciplines. In short, they're polymath. So for young minds, aspiring scientists, I really think uh, you should start looking at research in a interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary way or be comfortable being a polymath. Uh, I'm actually giving this talk uh, after the Randy Sheckman Nobel Laureate uh, in a week, in a last, next month. We are looking at uh, the importance of collaboration and a future of scientific research. So now coming to the opportunity specific to audience. India is unique in many ways and benefits from transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary research in factory innovation. India is one of the countries highly populous and also density is very, very high. 
So in other words, science and technology solutions that require Pradinia would be India situation centric. Similarly, if you notice, India is the only country in the world that has given approval for the DNA-based vaccine. Now, sadly, more than 300 million people are affected by pandemic COVID-19. Several million people passed away. So still, we do not have an end in sight. Uh, Singapore, we are going through uh, third wave. As I'm speaking, the number of cases in Singapore are also uh, growing up substantially. So innovations like DNA-based vaccine is a multidisciplinary effort. <clears throat> if you notice this particular innovation, <clears throat> on the right side, India has given approval <clears throat> for the needless delivery of vaccines. So that's amazing because normally the vaccines are delivered through injections. Here, uh, you don't need a needle. You can inject in the needleless way. Again, it requires uh, a solution built on biochemistry, molecular biology, human health, mechanical engineering, fluid dynamics, as well as sociology and mindset of the people, of psychology. So clearly, uh, humanity would benefit through interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary approaches. On the left side, we are talking about uh, using plants and as well as ionizing the air so that you could have large gatherings like the audience sitting now today in the auditorium. They can be protected from the airborne particulates as well as aerosolized um, viruses, as simple as that. But it's an integration of electrical engineering as well as uh, bacteriology, biology. I applaud uh, JSS ATE. Uh, I note that uh, you have uh, new programs like uh, BE in artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, robotics, automation, data science. Absolutely, uh, these are the areas uh, booming in India as well as the rest of the world. Uh, it's clear that uh, these uh, digital technologies are accepted by the human population at a much faster rate compared to the technologies of the past decades and centuries. And of course, uh, India is benefiting. Uh, you see some of the unicorns, that means the billion dollar companies uh, built on these uh, digital technologies. Uh, so India has launched $1.8 trillion infrastructure program. That's almost half of the India's GDP. It involves uh, many areas, including uh, hydrogen mission, which I believe is a very important one to transition India from current mode to carbon neutral India by 2050. So hydrogen economy, because hydrogen as an energy source, electric electricity source, uh, power source, is uh, most environmentally friendly compared to coal, natural gas, or any other known energy sources. And India is already a uh, private sector, is building massive uh, solar energy plants. They would be used for electrolyzing water and producing hydrogen needed by the Indian economy. And hopefully they would be exporting to the world. So if you look at it, uh, this is the slide compares the economic development on the x-axis. On the y-axis is about the proportion of the big companies as the country's GDP, uh, Singapore, USA, Japan, U U European Union, other advanced economies tend to have a large companies uh, taking on these massive programs and changing the innovation landscape and economic landscape of the country. 
India has a relatively small number, but I believe with the years to come, that will change. Again, this requires uh, breakthrough innovations, uh, holistic innovations. For example, in India, at least half the population is vegetarian. And uh, good news is the world is recognizing uh, vegetarian diet is less polluting than the meat-based diet. Of course, the recognizing that we are using an interdisciplinary approach here with my team, where we are looking at our own technologies and using plant proteins and trying to make uh, lamb-grown synthetic meat, which would have the same taste and texture as a meat harvested from the animals. Only thing is you no longer need to harvest the meat from the animals. You could <clears throat> lab grow this meat. Uh, and this, is a, this particular approach will have a massive change on the humanity and is already happening in European countries, uh, US as well as Singapore. So I have a, a very positive, upbeat feeling about uh, the future of India. The economy will grow from current three trillion to 10 trillion. Manufacturing industry is picking up. ICT industry is mature, but is ready to leverage industry 4.0 or what we call fourth industrial revolution technologies. We also call that society 5.0. And ICT would be very good uh, for uh, digital, that means in-person and online learning. Like today, uh, I am delivering uh, my lecture online, but many of you are sitting in the auditorium in, in person. But of course, uh, if, we can, if I can be there and I can also deliver online, uh, that would be the way to go forward. And of course, it is well known that India has a demographic dividend and there is a favorable geopolitical environment. And uh, India is known for uh, spiritual capital of the world. And at the beginning of the seminar, uh, the host already mentioned about that. The life purpose of the true social entrepreneur is to change the world. But I'm very sure India has uh, many of them. So in conclusion, world problems need polymaths in addition to disciplinary experts. Cross-discipline research and culture to be embraced and encouraged. So, as far as we know, historically, polymaths, intellectuals, were there in all societies and civilizations. Only in the most recent times, it became a more silo disciplinary way. But moving forward, human progress and sustainability need innovative solution, and they're best served by inter and transdisciplinary approaches. Thank you for having me uh, with you. I would like to appreciate, acknowledge your time and your uh, attention listening to my seminar. Thank you again. I believe the, the conference organizers want me to take questions. Uh, if anyone has any question, 
please uh, ask the question <clears throat> or you can also type your question in the chat box. I will try my best to answer. So the, <clears throat> there is a question from uh, uh, an audience about uh, postdoctoral opportunities in chemistry. Uh, the way Singapore goes about is um, professors in the universities, as well as the national institutes, they, they apply for research funding when they secure research funding, uh, they would be able to support uh, postdoctoral scientists and exchange scientists. So I encourage that uh, you write to researchers in Singapore who have a similar research interest as you. And once you introduce um, yourself and communicate uh, with them, uh, then the opportunities could be explored. There is a question from Amberson. Is there a age limit for uh, postdoctoral? As far as uh, Singapore, as well as uh, uh, many countries around the world I'm familiar, uh, there is no age limit. But there is an age limit for the fellowships which are funded by the certain uh, government agencies, uh, they do say a uh, particular age limit. So you need to differentiate uh, postdocs offered by uh, researchers after securing their research grants. It has no age limit, but fellowships where you apply directly do have age limits and age limit depends on which country is uh, offering those uh, fellowships. And uh, there is question about, I'm going through. Okay. I'm going one by one the question. So please wait for me until I come to your question. Okay. It's in it. Okay, there's a question by Dr. Natarajan. Uh, could you please give us clues to become polymaths? Well, uh, I think, thank you. I myself became a polymath. Uh, I probably would not claim I'm uh, exceptional, but I believe uh, how it started is uh, primarily uh, keeping myself open to collaborating with other uh, researchers and scientists like the National University of Singapore, we have, at the time when I joined, we had 13 uh, faculties or colleges, which are more or less covering every aspect of uh, human life. So when we are applying for research funding, I used to collaborate with them. So that's one way. Uh, second one, I'm also very well traveled around the world. So when I go to different universities for exchange programs, I actually go and sit in seminars, conferences that are unrelated to my research area. And I learn about that. For example, many, many years ago, uh, when I was studying in Cambridge University, uh, they used to have uh, Babbage lectures. Anybody can attend. So there are lectures on astronomy, there are lectures on uh, history, uh, there are lectures about uh, interesting aspects of human life. So by attending those and uh, talking to some of the people, slowly you understand. Uh, you can also learn other subject to certain depth, and then you combine your own uh, disciplinary knowledge and you can become 
uh, much more qualified. Uh, it's difficult uh, because uh, current promotion evaluation criteria around the world are very much monodisciplinary based. So polymaths find it very difficult to uh, articulate that they're also very strong researchers. But with time, I think that should be that should be fine. I hope I addressed you, Dr. Natarajan. And uh, next one. So Manish asked a question, any new innovations related to sustainable environmental management? Yes, uh, there's a lot of innovations are happening on environmental management. Uh, environmental management involves uh, air pollution uh, contributors, how you want to manage them. Uh, the second one is uh, growing amounts of solid waste around the world. Uh, right now, uh, they are using a fourth industrial revolution technologies for uh, solid waste management. I'll give an example. Uh, plastic is very widely used in all societies, but very difficult to do the recycling. So you need to do the fingerprinting or uh, labeling the plastics in the polymer state itself. So there are new innovations where you can do the labeling of the polymers before you actually make even product, what we call molecular labeling. And then later on, you can apply uh, digital technologies like uh, QR codes, uh, blockchaining, uh, so that you can use them to segregate. Then you do the automation, and then later on, you can consider either chemical recycling, uh, mechanical recycling, or incineration, or composting. So there are many, many ideas. Similarly, for the water, right now, the water is not completely recycled, but it's all, it is possible to recycle 100% of the water. So the, the, what we call zero waste of water. So again, there are a lot of technological innovations. Which university stands first in converting research work into product? But there are uh, different uh, methodologies. Uh, according to certain international rankings, uh, universities like Stanford University, MIT, uh, seems to have a, a larger success uh, with respect to translation of uh, high impact scientific research into products. Uh, again, uh, the, this information is based on the patent analysis as well as the startup community, but not uh, all research in the universities is, is patented. So uh, it may not be very accurate, but generally, since we do not have the complete database, based on the available uh, global rankings and comparisons, uh, those institutions tend to be on the top. So Kalyan Raj is asking, is NUS ready to provide a platform to conduct to OSIS conference if we host from BMS College of Engineering? I think uh, this one is, uh, you need to approach uh, constant professors because NUS has uh, more than uh, 2,500 professors, very large institution with uh, 40,000 students. So most likely, uh, any topic would have to be driven by a specific group of researchers, uh, professors at the university. Uh, if we can approach them, and uh, then we, we do that uh, very routinely. Uh, we get involved in uh, conferences around the world. Um, next one. In India, most of the above average students are attracted towards professional courses like medical degrees, engineering, rather than research and basic science like physics and chemistry. Uh, what is your view on it, sir? Uh, thank you, Raghu. The one reason is uh, in India, uh, research is not highly supported uh, by the funding agencies and the industry. So total expenditure, by the, as what we call percentage of GDP, which is actually less than 1%. Whereas uh, other countries where you find a lot of people doing research, especially in uh, basic sciences, 
also arts and social sciences, uh, these countries spend anywhere between 2.5% of GDP upwards up to 4% of GDP on research. So uh, clearly India is underspending. Uh, that's why the research opportunities are sometimes skewed. And also the career options are not uh, necessarily very clear to the young minds. Uh, many of the young professionals, if you remember, uh, this is 2021, uh, many of them in their families, they are probably the first timers going to the university for education. And then the families are conservative. Uh, so is the individuals, they are concerned about uh, making sure uh, there are jobs and so that they can build their uh, life and families and they can support their own families. Uh, that's the reason why uh, such a mindset exists in India, which is also similar in many countries. Now, there is a question from uh, Ravi Shankar. Any innovations with respect to nanozymes? Um, I am not familiar with this topic, but uh, if I have to broadly talk about it, uh, you are basically talking about maybe enzymes, those are engineered at the levels of uh, nanoscale. Well, uh, enzymes and other uh, biomolecules have that uh, length scales, which is a sub-micron, five nanometer level. And uh, we know that uh, the way uh, these molecules assemble uh, is different at the macro scale, that's one. There is also new technologies called CRISPR technology, where you could introduce certain uh, molecules uh, such a way uh, you can make them uh, smart, intelligent, and responsive. So there's a lot uh, coming up in that area. If you can search the uh, top journals, uh, I'm very sure you will find uh, other researchers working in this area. There is a question about from Dhruti, which filter is used as a shield for ionizing radiation, ornamental plants. So uh, Dhruti, the ionizing radiation, uh, it intentionally kept at a low levels so that it is not harmful to the human health. So this ionizing radiation is different from Normally, you, you are familiar with X-rays or other strong uh, ionizing systems uh, driven by atomic uh, programs. Me, That's different. Me, yeah. Hi. Uh, sir, uh, I will share your email to our participants. Okay. If they have any particular question, they can, uh, can they communicate to you, sir? Sure, sure. That's right. Yeah. Okay, uh, I request the participants uh, to communicate uh, to the professor directly. Now, uh, I will re request, uh, we are coming to an end. Before that, I request our uh, technical education director, uh, Professor HR Mahadev Swami, sir, to address the um, gathering. So uh, good, afternoon, good afternoon to everyone. Sir, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Shiram Ramkrishnan for wonderful talk and also wonderful highlights about the transdisciplinary research and innovation. So wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for your time and also the, the, the talk what you have given today. And at this point in time, just I would like to mention uh, the SJS's institutions. Uh, we have 300 plus institution and uh, in that we have uh, two universities. Uh, one in the medical uh, space and others in the science and technology. Apart from that, the engineering trade where we have a lot of research happening. In the medical space, uh, we are number one, number two in the India and we are in the top uh, 200 in the world, in the medical, and also we have a 100% citation in the medical, uh, the research space. 
in the science and technology yes we are moving ahead and uh, of course i seek your uh, guidance and also support and mentor us to move from currently version 0.5 to at least version 1.0 where we move towards that uh, uh, maybe having the more citations uh, more the uh, the the publications in the reputed journals and also other aspect so we re request your maybe mind maybe we'll write to you separately uh, then uh, request your uh, uh, support so maybe uh, as i said we are working also having a science and technology entrepreneurship park where we are you know experimenting all these ideas and innovation to extend uh, may not be you know fully but we are you uh, know doing that uh, maybe in the days to come years to come uh, we would like to move towards then uh, of course i will uh, request your collaboration with your university in a, with uh, their medical also as well as the science and technology university of course with the jss bangalore also we are add adding to that uh, request your you know, support and then uh, kindly consent us to collaborate with you uh, then work together i mean in, in in that aspect uh, not only the students and faculty the society in india will benefit through the jss uh, to contribute and uh, empower the people in all the aspect mainly we are in the health healthcare so science and technology many of the some of the problems we are address much much more than what we are doing today so thank you so participation with our uh, international thank you thank you uh, uh, sir, sir the, thank you so much sir uh, now i request uh, hod chemistry to give out of thanks very good morning sir it is indeed a great privilege and honor to express our gratitude to professor shriram ramakrishna a renowned researcher who has delivered a highly insightful talk and need and significance to move towards inter and transdisciplinary research and its importance in nep 2020 also on behalf of jss at bangalore and department of chemistry i extend our sincere thanks to professor for devoting his valuable time thank you very much sir we hope to have very fruitful association in future also thank you sir i must uh, mention our deep sense of gratitude due to our management and professor hr mahadeva swami joint director technical education division for all the encouragement and support thank you sir principal mrutyanjay vilate for all the suggestions and support thank you sir i also wish to express my sincere thanks to deans hods section heads all the faculty members and the entire team behind this event thank you one and all finally i thank all the participants across the country and globe for overwhelming response and participation thank you one and all thank you sir thank you so much sir okay i wish you all the best thank you sir thank you so bye much bye. sir thank you so much sir